Okay, rewind. Go. Do you know I wrote a song? Do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing? Um, This thing called paper signing is like life changing. I just always have this thinking of like, I'm running out of time. For me, it's everything is about art. You know, how you tell your story. You've written two books. Ooh, okay. Exclusive right here. You can actually add one more thing. Welcome to another episode of The Mood Podcast. And today I spoke with Pandu Waskata, more commonly known as Backpacker Tampan. He's an Indonesian travel photographer and videographer, and his story is truly captivating. It's one of which dreams are made. He started from absolutely nothing and chased his ambitions of wanting to travel at a relatively early age. Through his experiences, he developed his skill of telling stories, and it is his passion for storytelling that underlies everything he does. We talked a lot about the genesis of how he became such a popular storyteller and how photography played a large role in this. Now that he has evolved into an artist with many strings to his bow, he shared with me how much he still wishes his creativity could be more his own and not just for others. Harping back to when he began having full creative freedom on what he does and how he does it. He's a happy man and it was a privilege to have such a kind-hearted and optimistic artist on the show. May I hope he spreads as much joy and inspiration to you all as he did for me. Enjoy. Hey guys, before I let you continue with the video, just indulge me for a few minutes. I want to briefly talk about my new brand, Yore. Founded with my business partner and photographic artist, Finn Matson, we're proud to bring you a new artisanal jewelry and specialty coffee brand. Yep, what on earth do they have to do with each other or anything at all? Well, they're both our passions. They've always been another artistic outlet for me, now for over a decade. So for those that know me, coffee has been my other obsession since I was young. And as a result of it, I'm a qualified SCA coffee specialist. So when I met Finn, some of you might have seen my podcast with him when we barely knew each other. Our love for art and jewelry had a home. And that home is here, House of Yore. Yore is, amongst others, an artisan jewelry label, and it's all about the art of intent for everything that we do. Our intention with Yore was to add a touch of celestial elegance and artistic expression to our visual narratives. Every jewelry piece is a statement, a reflection of your unique story and purpose. It's not just about jewelry, it's a wearable piece of art that speaks volumes. Picture this, silver or gold adorned with an actual piece of lunar meteorite. That's right, straight from our moon making every piece as unique as the moments that we usually capture through our lenses. From limited edition lunar jewelry pieces to finely crafted 925 sterling silver and gold rings, pendants and chains, there's something for all of you in our unique designs. We're also committed to the environment as much as possible. Our coffee is direct trade, organically produced and locally farmed, minimizing impact on the environment as much as possible. Our jewelry packaging is all sustainable and recycled, other than the moon rock, of course. Proudly eco-friendly in both packaging and jewelry production, you can feel good about looking good. And to top it off, we offer free worldwide shipping, ensuring that a piece of lunar beauty can grace your collection no matter where life takes you. And if you ever find yourself here in Bali, please come and visit us. Our cafe and community-driven art house is a haven for creatives just like you. So before we head back into the video, Please just take a moment to explore Yore's collection. And as a special treat for you, my wonderful audience, Yore is offering an exclusive discount. Head over to our website and use the code below for a 10% discount off your jewelry purchase. The link and details are in the description. Anyway, thanks so much for listening and I'll let you get back to the video now. Tampan, <laughs> Pandu, I'm not going to try and pronounce your full name because I'm not that good. But um, maybe you can pronounce your full name for us. Give us an introduction. Thank Welcome to the Mood Podcast. Thank you. Um, give us a little intro about yourself. So my full name is Pandu Waskita Adiraharja. But people call me just Pandu. Or my social media name is actually Backpacker Tampan. So a lot of people also call me Tampan. Normally, if you're a foreigner, you call me Tampan because they usually think that's my real name. Okay. But if you're Indonesian, 
you know that Tangpan means actually handsome. Yep. So that's a good nickname for you, handsome. Yeah, guy. it's a very catchy yeah. name. So that's why I make it. I just want to be catchy. Okay. And um, yeah, I'm well known as the travel guy on social media, in TikTok, in YouTube, and Instagram. I used to be a backpacker, like a few years ago, but then I I grew, and now I'm more like luggage <laughs> than a backpacker. But I would still use backpacker name for like forever because it reminds me of where and when I started it. And how did you start? Tell it. Tell us the story of how you started. It's cliche, but it started as a dream, like as a big, big dream, because I was born and raised in a very ordinary family, but like very loving. And I have like uh, three siblings. So my parents, um, we don't travel. And it's quite hard to raise four of us, especially education in Indonesia is very expensive. So we don't travel. But I just have this big dream to travel because I don't know, it's like it's a big calling for me. Like I used to read like encyclopedia books mm -hmm. like about seven world wonders and i like to watch tv shows and movies about traveling around the world and like adventure around the world and that's how I, my dream got bigger and bigger but then uh, i realized it was quite hard because again i was born and raised in an ordinary family so financially uh it's it's hard for me to travel but then um yeah, I grow into bigger and older and wiser. And then I started to realize that I am the only person that can make my dream come, come true. So I tried many ways to make my dream come true by working, by joining competition until I actually won a competition in 2014. And that's when I started first traveling. And it was to Thailand, Bangkok. It so was, you were, the competition was, the prize was to go to Bangkok? Actually, the Number one prize is a trip to Australia, but I didn't win that one. Okay. I won the second one and it was, I got an iPhone, iPhone 4, I think 4S, but I sold it, cool. sold it and I bought ticket Amazing. for Thailand. Amazing. That's when I started traveling. And that also at the time I realized that traveling is not as expensive as I think I thought, uh, because I... There was a time I first uh, joining a couch surfing community. So it really opened my eyes about this travelers one around the world who is like um, hosting people in their home and it could save money and brings like the community bigger around the world. You have friends and family everywhere. And since then, I used always use couch surfing and travel as a backpacker with a very tight budget until 2022. 2020, sorry, 2020. The yeah. famous year, infamous year. Yeah. Yeah. 2020, um, my, I would say my life changed. Uh, I don't know, because it's, it's, um, it's a big thing to say, because 2020 was like a hard year for almost every people, because it was pandemic and a lot of people losing their job and stuff. But, at some point, I it grew so much on that year, and I think on it's social because, media. Yes, okay. and it really changed me. Um, I think it's because uh, the screen screen time of people is like getting mm -hmm. really high. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to lose that momentum. I was very consistent on making content, starting TikTok as well, and that's when I grew very big that year. And since then, I got many um, job offers from brands and from, wow. you know. To do what? What You know, when brands reach out to you, what, yeah. is, what is their main desire? Is it is content essentially or is it blogs or is it reviews or is it a bit of everything? For me specifically, because I, I am a person who is like uh, also have a, I, I show my personality. I talk to in front of camera. So people want me to uh, promote their brand in my content. But the challenge is I need to make it um, match with my branding, which is travel brands. And yeah, so that's like, uh, that's how the creative work is challenged on that part. Because uh, a lot of time, the brand is like, is not quite related to travel. 
So you example, like any s- brands? Yeah, yeah. now it's very uh, diverse. Mm-hmm. Example like skincare. Okay. It's like a beauty product, but I, that's the challenge. How do I make this into my travel travel brands? So the things I I did is like something like uh, you know, uh, even though I travel and I got sun so much in my skin, but my skin still like looks good or whatever. I use this brand, so something like that. Yeah, just make stuff up. It's yeah. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, we just get, we just went to the UK, and it's a reminder of how. I don't know why we're talking about skin, but it's a reminder of how those types of little things are important. Um, even even if you are selling them for a brand, it's skincare, healthcare, yeah, all about that. When you when you're traveling so much, especially if you're backpacking, where you don't have maybe the luxuries of a five star hotel and massages and all that, like you sort of look after yourself. So yeah, I'm sure it's kind of easy to kind of incorporate that into yeah into your content. Let's rewind a little bit. So. You know, when you first went to Bangkok, that was your first experience of traveling, right? Correct, so yeah. what was it about the travel experience that really hooked you? Um, It's more like about, it's finally uh, the big dream that I've been dreaming of all the time is coming true. So it was very like, um, I was very excited in every part of the journey. Example, like, that was also my first time travel by airplane. So seeing clouds is just very like, wow, clouds. And then like temples and like Pad Thai. Yeah. <laughs> so every single thing is just very exciting because something new. Okay. Something totally new for me always excites me. So how did the videography, photography and the, the kind of content creation come into the travel is, was that always an interest of yours as well, or were you just looking for ways to combine travel with something with pay? I guess I think at some point in the middle of the journey, it gets into I need to combine this. But when I started it, it was just like as simple as I want to take pictures as much as I want. Okay. That's it. So I just like it's like a, a tourist picture, you know, selfie and this pose, and you know, not photography at all. Uh, but then I started to share in my social media account. Uh, but that time I was, I didn't have my Instagram, I think. It was, I don't know if you know it. I don't think you know it, but like Ask FM. Ask FM. Yeah, it's about writing like blogging. Yeah, People yeah, ask yeah. a new answer or something like that. I, I've heard of it. I've never used it. So I started that there, actually. Okay. It's based on writing story. So um, yeah, my my story goes viral on that um platform which is ask them and then uh, it was all about storytelling it was about it's not about like of course it's like selfie picture people don't really interested on like selfie picture but the interesting part for audience is like the story because uh after 2024 that time in the mid-year also 2024 i started uh backpacking to southeast asia five countries three weeks with four of my friends and that's when I got a little bit of attention in social media because, yeah, it was like a very interesting journey for Indonesian as a backpacker because there are not so many backpackers that time who travels um, outside the country. So I kind of like um, first starter who is backpacking and bring it to social media, which is ASFM. And from that, my ASFM grew and grew. Then I tried to bring my audience to visit my Instagram. And that time, my Instagram also still not very like, yeah, you know, it's like a very old-fashioned photography, which is like there's no um, angle or there's no story about the photo. But like time by time, I I learned photography. Actually, I learned more into like a real photography in 2017 when I got when I moved to Bali. Okay. Yeah. Why? Why uh, Why I moved or why I why started? Did, why was Bali, why did Bali allow you to learn photography? Why did you learn photography when you came to Bali? Because when I got to Bali, I met this community, actually in Changpu, of photographers. That time, I actually missed that time where like the <laughs> community of photography is really 
supporting and it's really it's pure photography and it's just learning skills together and shooting together and like riding motorbike at 5 a.m. to Tegalalang to shoot sunrise. I miss those times. Uh, I met a lot of photographers in that time. And that's when I learned. And I when I also buy my first real camera, which was Sony A6000. Okay. That was my first yeah. camera. Okay. I camera. used to shoot in auto always. Okay. For like a year, 2017 until 2018. I met uh, one of my best friends. He's not here anymore. He's in US now. What's his name? Ali Olfat. Okay. His photo is amazing. Like amazing. You would love it if you see it. He is the one who taught me uh, about all the technical things about photography, about ISO, F, and um, shutter speed, and everything. And since then, 2018, I never shoot in auto anymore. I never shoot in JPEG anymore. Always shoot in RAW. Well, we've all we've all done that, you know. Yeah. Before we know better, right? We always, yeah. just, we, we, everyone yeah. has done that. But I don't know. I I have to dis- disagree with that because uh, a lot of my friends, who is also like a travel influencer, they seem like still comfortable on shooting in auto and in JPEG. So, okay, yeah. I don't. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it depends what you're using the images yeah. for, right? If you're right. just going to use them for social media, then I would have, I would find it difficult to call you like a true photographer. But um, you know, if you know the differences yeah. and you say, okay, well, I know why manual yeah. is better than auto, but I still choose to use auto because it's quicker. I don't have to think about anything. Fine, that's cool. Yeah, like, but you know, when you don't know about manual and you don't know about raw and you don't know about all the things that digital cameras can do these days, then you know, I feel like uh, you're missing out on so yeah. much, you know, yeah. uh, especially if you want to be a photographer. But I noticed when you were talking about photography and learning photography, your your face was like lit up, like super happy and talking about 2017 when you learned it. Yeah. I feel like a lot of it is about the people for you. Is that, oh, yeah. correct? you know, it, yeah. what what's changed since, I know you said you've missed those times. What's changed since mm. 2017 in terms of the photography community specifically? Well, uh, there are two points. I think the first one, uh, I think when I talk about that, you can see I like I'm like um, into this friendship and meeting people. But if we talk about like uh, in in what do you say social media culture, I would say, mm-hmm. uh, especially Instagram, because Instagram changed the way we we work in creative space. Yeah, because it again, it, I talk about this. It used to be a very pure photography and very dreamy photo. No AI, just like, I mean, Photoshop, okay, but like no AI, pure art. Now it's shifted into like very organic reels that you don't mm-hmm. seem like you don't need a camera anymore. You just like record with your phone and that can get a lot of attention and you can get viral and grow so much more. So I just feel like, I don't know if you feel the same way, but like uh, photography now get less more appreciated and less attention than these like very simple reels that you can shoot with phone and stuff like that totally agree right I, I, yeah but i'm gonna put it back to you now do you think that's a good thing or a bad thing um <laughs> be honest it's like for a lot of people it's a very good thing especially if you want to start um social media so the word it's too late it's not there anymore you can just get 100k views in just one night now. Mm-hmm. Where in the past, you have to like wait and yep. work and very constant posting and editing and getting into the community and support each other for like a few years. Now it's like, it's very easy to get viral. So again, it's I wouldn't say it's bad because it's very beneficial, beneficial for a lot of newcomer. But beneficial for what? I mean, it depends on the intent of the individual. Right. If your intent is to become a celebrity and it's become social media famous, yeah. then I don't think that's good. That, how does that breed anything that's good and productive to, to society? Like it's not art. It's it's just attention grabbing. You're going to post like, you're either going to post something nude or women are going to post something in their bikinis, right? Yeah. Or 
they're going to post something that's not very nice to see in terms of like an accident or a fight or yeah. a crash or something that's like grabs the attention, right? Yeah. So the m more people do that because they want to go viral, because yes. they want to get famous or they want to be known or they want to be get this dopamine hit. Yeah. And it's all just, when it comes to photography, that's why I still love, that's why I think photography is timeless in, in every sense of the word yeah. in both photographs, actually photographs, but the industry is because you know, tr true photographers will, will just want to do photography. Yeah. You don't give a fuck about, like, I mean, everyone cares about their social media presence. Everyone does. And if people say they don't, I don't believe them. Oh, yeah. But if you're not doing photography purely for social media likes, then I think that's a good thing. If you're doing yeah. photography just for social media views, what is the end goal, right? right. You get 100,000 views, yeah. like, oh, now I want 200,000. Yeah. Well, you get 100,000 followers, now I want 200,000, then I yeah. want 300,000, and I want yeah. to be liked more, I want more people to like me. Yeah. I don't think that helps photography. Yeah. Because of the course, images agree, and the agree. content just gets diluted, right? Yeah. I mean, that, I've, I've just completely taken over that, but that, that's, no, what I I, that's what I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm on the same page. Like, uh, it, again, it depends, like you say, it depends on like what, what, is, what is you're aiming for. Yeah. Are you aiming for business or just like pure passion and hobby? Because again, if you're like truly into photography, then you don't mind getting less attention because you love your work, you know. But if some people are like quite business minded and they want popularity, they want money, they want to, you know, I want to be influencer, blah, 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 blah. And that's when some people, yeah. Do you see yourself as an influencer? I hate to be called <laughs> an influencer. Um, I think it it it's how people see us are we in what like what are we influencing for you know i cannot label myself as an influencer if people think like i influence people by inspiring but like through my story through my how i get my dreams then okay then i i influence you but i would say i'm more comfortable to be called as an artist rather than a photographer because um yeah for me, it's, everything is about art. It's about how you tell your story. Yeah, I think you mentioned that earlier and I, I wrote it down. Um, you, you know, you really first got into all of this because you wanted to tell stories. Yeah. And I think that's wonderful. And I think that's why you're so popular and why I follow you and we enjoy seeing your stuff because you're authentic. You are the real person. And yeah, everyone does brand work and has clients because you've got to pay the bills, right? So you've got to find yeah. that outlet. But your, you know, your content is is very artistic, and certainly your videos. I love watching your your, you. your video stuff, um, because it's you. It's it's yeah, real tampan, right? It's backpacking yeah. tampan. Yeah, and uh, it's nice to see that you've start you started in a, you know, from nothing essentially, and you've got to a point where you're still that same person. What, ha, where was the trip? Where was the destination? Or you know, I know, um, I know one of your biggest kind of. Uh, travel experience was going to India with you know very limited budget oh, yeah. and you had to really improvise with how yeah. you earn money right right and this thing called paper signing I, oh. what is that like so t tell me about India first and then we'll talk about paper signing how you well, get... I'm really I'm like I'm happy that you read about that well yeah this is like, it, it, like a, long, it a took, while ago it, yeah I mean but that was your first real kind of travel experience where yeah. you just went fuck it i'm gonna go to yes. india and yes. see what happens right tell, tell us tell us that story it was like 2015 that was like my first time ever solo backpacking um so my challenge is i have a year from 2015 to no, sorry 14 to 15 to save money as much as i can for traveling to okay. nepal and india um but Short story, I only have the money that I got from saving. It's just like $250 USD okay. for like a month. I bought the ticket already. Like the, the how do you call it? FF? The, the ticket, the yeah. plane ticket. Yeah, but like the, you go to India and then you go back to your country. Oh my God, my English. Visa? The return ticket. A return ticket. Return ticket. Okay. I got it already. And I have to $250 for like... um surviving there like i knew just living expenses $250. Yeah, yeah per month i knew i would at some point i would run out of money 
somehow. But it's just like, fuck it. I'll just go. I'll just yeah. think about it later. Yeah. Like I'll do, I don't know. I'll, I'll find a way. Yeah. There's always a way. And then I went to Nepal for hiking in Himalaya alone. Wow. Because I did, I want to see snow. I've never seen snow in my okay. life. And when I research, Nepal is like, you can do a border crossing from Nepal to India. And that's why I put Nepal as well. It's supposed to be just India. But like, okay, I can see snow. Let's go. <laughs> and then I did a little research. And uh, you're supposed to go with a tour guide, like a hiking guide, which costs $20 per day. But I can't afford that. So I just went alone, which is amazing. It's like life-changing. But short story, I got lost in the jungle in the way back. Okay. Yeah, it's like a real jungle where I have to... Hmm, I used my, like cut my the, selfie stick uh, to, to cut to cut that wow. because I didn't have a knife. And then it was like, I fall down a few times. I fall a river. And then it was a happy ending because I found a farmer house in the middle of the jungle. And I stayed with them wow. um, for like a night. Can you show them the photo? Maybe I can. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll put it on the screen. The yeah. family. And mm-hmm. like, like um, that was like, like the photo that I will remember for the rest of my life. Anyway. Were you, sorry, were you into photography at this time or you had? No. You, you, I have a GoPro. Okay. So I did vlogging. So I talked to camera. Okay. For YouTube. Yep. But. For photography, just like a very simple one with GoPro. Yep. Like selfie and stuff like that. And uh, on that hiking trip, I miscalculated because I need, I turned out I need to pay a permit for like quite expensive. And that's where I, my money is just like almost gone just because of that trip. Because I miscalculated. I didn't know about like this one permit. And then, short story, I went to India and I arrived in Taj Mahal, which was my big, big dream ever. Because remember, I used to read book about Encyclopedia, mm-hmm. Seven World Wonders. Uh, Taj Mahal was one of my like biggest dream. I love India. I love culture. I love colorful streets. And uh, I arrived there, Taj Mahal. I was sad because I didn't get the chance to get inside Taj Mahal because I didn't have money. So they, that time I was like uh, talking to the, the how do you call it, the locket stuff? Uh, who sells tickets? Entrance stuff. Entrance yeah. stuff. Yeah. I talked to them. I begged them if I can get a local ticket price, which is very cheap, but they couldn't help me. So the thing that happened was there was actually a tuk-tuk driver who actually watched me begging to the staff for like a local ticket price because I didn't have enough money. He um, offered me to bring me to the backside of Taj Mahal because there was like a park mm-hmm. where we can see Taj Mahal. And the Mahal. river. Yes. Yep. I didn't know about that. No. And then he brought me and then yeah, I saw Taj Mahal for the first time even though I didn't get the chance to get inside it but like it was beautiful I cried because it's my dream and then for being grateful I took out my notebook and I write in Indonesian it's uh, spelled Alhamdulillah sesuatu Alhamdulillah is like something that you say to your God like to Allah my Mm -hmm. God for giving me this um, experience and then I took a photo with my GoPro, with that writing, with the background of Taj Mahal. Mm, cool. So after that, I went to Agra. Mm-hmm. I was hosted by Couchsurfing host, but I didn't tell him that I did not have enough money anymore because I don't want to stress him out. And, you know, I'll probably get a bad review because of that. So I'll just sit down in my room and like think, what can I do? What can I do to make money? I had option to call my family, but I didn't want to do that. I don't want to be like crying baby, you know? So I just like try what can I do, what I, what I can do. And then I opened social media, which is Ask Avem, the blogging um, platform. And I saw my last picture that I posted was the writing with the background of Taj Mahal I took. And then suddenly I got, 
inspiration, like a magical inspiration. I think I can make money with this. So the thing what I did is was I announced to my audience that time, which is not many, but like still I have audience, that uh, tomorrow I'm going to this mountain in India, which is very beautiful. I can write any writings that you want, like, Happy birthday to your friends or like I love you for your like your boyfriend, your girlfriend, any writings that you want me to write, I'll do it. I'll take it in a very be- beautiful background. And it cost uh two dollar, I think the time, per photo. So I didn't um expect that much, but then again, uh it was like life changing ex- like life changing moment of my life because in one hour I got like seventy dollar, which wow. is like a lot for me to survive uh, in India. That in goes one a lot. Uh, goes yeah. a long way, right? Yeah, seventy dollar in like Amazing. one hour in my bank account because people like interested, like okay, okay, I'm interested. So that way, I um, I continue the same way in the next city, in the next city, in the next city. So that's how I survive in India. Amazing the paper sign. Cool. Yeah. Um. Do you still do that? Like, not anymore you, but you could do like videos on your tiktok for people uh, shout no, outs no 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 i get messages all the time oh, could you give me a shout out like, no not <laughs> i don't understand but i know celebrities in the u.s well around the world they they yeah. they um you know offer to send my my uh, sister-in-law she actually my brother got my sister-in-law a um a birthday present, which was one of her favorite celebrities, oh. sending her a, a message. Who? I think it was like a hundred. I can't remember. It was like a hundred bucks or something. Hundred um, bucks. Yeah, and I know um, a lot of celebrities do it. They just and they they can do video messages as well, like two hundred fifty. But oh, it depends on how big the celebrity is. Um, so maybe you should, you know, you're a celebrity in Indonesia, so but you can do it. That's not something I'm proud of. Like, <laughs> well, I no. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, it's not exactly art, is it? Um, so from then, uh, you obviously completed your India trip, you had the money and then, then what happened? So you, you, when did photography kind of fit into that, those kind of travel experiences? So, like I said before, uh, I didn't get really into photography until 2017. So you, oh, so you didn't even think about it before you came to Bali? I take pictures, but it's like a very like traditional with with phone but you weren't thinking like oh i need to i want to take photos like i i want to be better at this actually yeah oh okay but like in a very like um again traditional way okay because i didn't have like expensive gear like Mm -hmm. like a real camera which is like with uh gopro so what i did was actually um again i i i like to be called as an artist because um i don't mind if i have uh like a very cheap camera but what I want to aim is like actually uh, making a picture that tells a story so in that time no matter how bad the quality is but my work is something that I'm proud of is yeah it's it's meant to be telling a story to the people how do you do that? so I would say um, there's like a little I wouldn't say tips and tricks, but like, okay, why not? Um, But like, I always try, because I'm a travel photographer. So I travel uh, to a lot of places, mostly nature. That's something that I really enjoy. Uh, I never take picture only just the nature. If you can see my Instagram, especially the old ones, because again, it was like, I would say, more like pure photography. Uh, I would put a subject. Or like anything that could make a story. So when people see it, especially like uh, example like um, waterfall. So if you take a picture of a waterfall, just the waterfall, then when people see it, it's just like, oh, it's a beautiful waterfall. And that's it. But when you put subject in it, example like a people, even better if the the person like doing something post or like interaction to the nature itself or like anything then it tells more story oh it's a story about a fisherman that is fishing in the river that like goes to the waterfall and something like that Mm. so yeah do you do you miss those types of 
photographs. Yeah, yeah, a lot actually. But you must. So I mean, you must do your own kind of trips, right? Just not for clients. I so then you must get your own style of photos and do your own photography. You still do that, though, right? So that's like something I. What's the, I don't know what other word than regret because it's not a regret, but like, um, a little bit. There's like a little happiness that took out from, right? What, where, what I am now and where I am now, because honestly, if I can be honest, now I travel. All of them is like sponsored. Yep. I did say to you that I will go to Bromo. That will actually my second time this year that I fully paid my trip for my own without any brand, without any sponsor. So I can do whatever I love, which is photography, like really high quality cinematic video. Other than that, this year, it was all sponsored. Okay. And that time I did not have enough space to pull out my creativity that I love, which is photography. Because, you know, brands wants me to do reels and they want me to do that and that. So that's something that is a little bit lost from me, if I can be honest. Yeah, no, please be yeah. honest. I, I think that's always a difficult battle for any photographer or any yeah. videographer who's trying to make money, right? Yeah. Because the the art and the you can't always do your own personal projects. It, those people that do their personal projects and get paid for them, that's a dream, right? Because you get free creativity, you get complete control over your project. And you get sponsored, like yeah. brilliant. There aren't many companies and there aren't many jobs out there like yeah. that. But if you were to speak to a beginner who's trying to do photography, videography, who looks at you and goes, Oh, I want to be like Tampan, like would there be any specific advice that you would give them that maybe you might do differently if it was yourself? Or would you just say, I oh, just do it like I did? I would say um, from what I learned about this culture shifting from like pure photography into like reels is like you have to adapt if you want to grow faster. You have to lower down your idealism mm. um, if you want to grow faster. If not, then, well, if you're happy with like what you're, what you're posting, then that's what matters the most but if you want to get more like into a business side like i want to grow uh because i want uh i want to get brand deals and stuff then you have to lower down your idealism and see what the market likes but please don't lose don't lose yourself in the process because like mm, from what i mean don't lose yourself is don't lose your style because like uh, you need to really show who you really are like if you see me in my page, you can, well, I would describe myself as like a magical, I like color, like bright, like smile and make people happy and storytelling, emotional and um, try to post and be who you really are. If you're like not very like magical person, because everyone has a style, you know, some people more like, um, like a dark and moody and like faded editing and stuff like that then be that and be consistent on that and um yeah along the way in if you're consistent then it will it will it will grow it will get more attention because um what i can note about at least few of my friends that like stuck in that numbers of growth mm -hmm is one of them is like they are trying to be someone else like i know that um maybe they are bored with their style um i'm bored i want to try something new but you can try something new you can try new style but don't lose who you really are because a lot of people does that they copy because they want to be like i want to try to be like him i want to try to be like him but then What's your uniqueness? Your uniqueness is like gone. I think that's very easy to see, especially with photographers, because a lot of photographers, including me, when when I've seen a lot of growth just through consistency, and I found a way to just um, express myself 
uh, much like you, like to be able to be consistent with expressing myself, but in a format that the algorithm likes, right? So Correct. Reels, essentially, yeah. but still keep photos in there. Like I can't, I, I would never want to go on Instagram ever if I couldn't post photos and if I couldn't see photos. Like yeah. there are other platforms, of course, for yeah. photos. I desperately hope there are new apps yeah. coming soon that are just photography specific, but I don't see any. Um, you know, Vero tried it. There are other platforms like 500px and Flickr, but they don't really have a social media uh, profile. Um, you know, YouTube is obviously all video, TikTok's all video, even though I think now you can post photos. Yeah. But so I think that's really important and but really difficult for photographers these days, especially when it, you know, a couple of years ago started just transitioning to just yeah. reels heavy because photographers are just left in the dust. Like yeah. what what do what are we meant to do? Yeah. Do we look elsewhere now? Do we not worry about it? But yeah. people have to worry about it because that's an income stream yeah. and it's also a kind of a fulfillment yeah. platform. So yeah, I, I get that. I think it's really important, like if you're talking to beginners, yeah, I think it's really important to kind of do what you've done, maybe a little bit more, but uh, leave that space for personal time. Yeah, Leave that space to do your personal projects. Yeah. Like go to Bromo, go traveling and just, or you just have a holiday, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Like I see so many guys, I have friend, friends here who are amazing photographers. They just burn out so quickly because they, they love it so much and they want to, you know, they don't know how long it's going to last for, right? With income, especially like job, 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 personal project, job, 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 personal project. Yeah, and they're always, always, always working, which is, which is great. But knowing when to have that personal time, I think is of course. super important, right? Yeah. Yeah. Can I actually add one more thing? Because I didn't feel like my last talk didn't, it didn't give like um good okay, conclusion. <laughs> Go. Yeah. So it was like a, tips for beginners, right? Um, I talk about you have to adapt. You have to see like what market likes right now, which is reels. You can actually combine those two. Like if you like real pure photography, yes, you can still be in that, but in a form of reels. So you can example, you can show like a video of reels that shows a BTS versus the result. So you can still show your quality, right? Yep. You don't have to be like, influencer with like hey i'm here i'm there you can still be a photographer you just have to creative enough to combine and to follow what markets like yep. nowadays what's the trend if you want to grow faster and i think it's important to understand that instagram is not a photography app like it's it's not don't it treat like it like it, a photography app it used to be it, it used to like, be it started as a yeah, photo it was right? purely that right yeah. there's photos sharing your photos yeah. in a social way now it's definitely not it's 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 just not they've yeah. they've changed it so much it's yeah. um, i don't know what you would call it i mean it's pure social media but it's not yeah. even social anymore mm. this is another media platform That's like right, how many yeah. people like when you were talking about community and um how people socialized when instagram back in I wasn't even on it in 2017, I don't think. Maybe it was just starting. But, you know, it was way gone by then. Even back in 2017, the emphasis was on being social. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't grow unless you were active with other accounts and meeting people online and, yeah. and engaging with them, chatting to them, commenting, like sharing, saving, all of that stuff. Now, and you said it earlier, I don't think that really matters anymore. Um I think it's probably still important. I, I still use it a lot for DMs and reaching yeah. out to people and obviously I have my friend network where, you know, I see their photos all the time. But, I, you know, compared to five or six years ago, I think it was a true social media yeah. app. Now it's just, I don't know what it is. It's just like a viral it's, media platform. Right. Yeah. People Do just compete to... Yeah, it's a dopamine platform, popular. right? It used to, you remember it used, there was like uh, Instagram worldwide meets every year. In Indonesia, it's very like, it's very, quite very famous. Like back then, before Reels era. Social media is huge in, in Indonesia, isn't it? I mean, it's huge everywhere, but TikTok and Instagram yeah. are like, it's just so huge. Here. Yeah. People love it, don't they? Yeah. Absolutely love it. Um, and I think that a lot of people use it for such cool 
yeah experiences and yeah i mean a lot of really a lot of good things as well from the shifting and yep. like you can get yep. a lot of diverse information you can get so many inspiration from a lot of unique creators actually from tiktok and reels who is not like again who's not only like showing pure photography but like other things that we you know we haven't really heard before but like all these new creators are like they show up with such a unique personality yep. and bring such new information and knowledge that we don't know before and yep. that's totally a really agree. cool thing about nowadays Instagram and TikTok I think we we I mean I we talk about I mean it's every podcast we talk about Instagram uh, yeah. I think because it's it's very important for photographers and, or at least has been and still is arguably uh, in a in a different way but We also talk about it. I talk about it with Fee, my wife, a lot. And, you know, it comes up in so many conversations. For me, it's all about the intent of using it. So what are you using Instagram for? I 90% of my Instagram use, I mean, I go on it every day. My screen time is probably less than 10 minutes a day. Like most of that 10 minutes is posting. Um, the rest is getting inspiration. Like I, that's what I use it for. And I'm really proud of that. Like I get so much inspiration from some amazing artists on Instagram. And I love that those amazing artists are are there and are doing so well yeah. and are, are able to find that platform for that such unique, and I totally agree with you, such unique and creative artists out there who've adapted so well and are bringing something new to the game. And that's yeah. what Reels and the, the shift has done. It's created this new world of creativity. Um, and those people who call themselves artists, I love it. You know, people's, if people tell me they're a content creator, I don't have any, I don't have any time for you, but I, I understand how people make a business out of that. Now yeah. I understand the value of it. Um, but getting inspiration, that is my main source of inspiration. Actually, I don't know about you, but, uh, going back to you being influential, not an influencer, mm -hmm. right? There's a big difference. Yeah. Um, influencer, I feel is just like a job type. Yeah. yeah it's everyone is influential in some way yeah. you know we're human beings we were able to influence friends family people we we come in contact with um i think it's i think it's so good for that and that's why people follow you right because you inspire people um some people will educate and inspire at the same time some people inspire through just their art other people will just engage be kind of someone who can you know be there for for other people there are so many cool ways to use it but i just think that it gets a bit lost with photographers. Some, some, you know, other industries have benefited yeah. from it, right? But Indonesia, I found it very interesting experience here because if you're not big on Indonesia, uh, big on Indonesia, if you're not big on Instagram here, um, you're not considered like a good photographer. It's it's weird. Like in the West, um, Instagram's obviously very important, but there's a whole world outside social media. Like there's a whole photography world. A l so many photographers that just are not on Instagram, right? They just use websites, they use YouTube, they use galleries, they use publications, they use Twitter, you know, where they're, maybe they're NFT, right? You're really into NFTs, photography slave. It's funny because you get in this bubble, this social media bubble where Instagram is like your life. And it's like, oh no, this, this, if I'm not big on Instagram, then I failed. And it's, and I would always want to say that to begin with, like, Yes, if that's important to you, like give it everything you've got. Be consistent, post a lot, make it good content, like tell your stories, be authentic and just keep at it, right? It will happen. But um, it's not everything. It doesn't work out. It's not everything. I know so many photographers that have been like really successful and have not given Instagram any time really at all. You know, you still can get, you can still get brand work without Instagram, right? True. Anyway. That's my rant. Let's talk about something other than social media. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's touch a little bit on your other interests because, you okay. know, I, I, I haven't read your two books. You've written two books? Two books, yeah. I haven't read them. It's in hoping... Indonesia. Oh, okay. Well, I was hoping you'd bring me a free copy so I could at least... You, you can bring... read Indonesia? Yes, I will bring you. <laughs> Is it... Um, are they they're physical copies? Uh, physical. E -books? Yeah, physical okay. and e-book. Okay. Well, I can get the e-book and then just run it through Google Translate. There's going to be a lot of work. Or you like, can okay. rewrite it for me in English. Maybe I'll publish in English version. Tell me tell me a little bit about them because um, one's fiction, one's non-fiction, right? Are uh, they both, both are non-fiction. -non both are non-fiction. 100% okay. based on my story. Okay. Yeah. The first one was called Quit. 
That's the second one. Second. First one is bucket list. Okay. Tell me so about it. So it's about, uh, I think I spelled the story already. Oh, in, same in, story? Yeah. It's okay. like about the Nepal in India. But okay. like, it's really how I started traveling and like why I want to go traveling. My big dream to travel around the world. And I wrote down, I think, 12 bucket lists. What were they? Ooh, I think one of them is Taj Mahal. And then... Uh, so was it all the seven wonders? No, no. Oh, okay. I haven't... Because seven, seven wonders always change every year, right? Yeah, there's so. well, the original seven wonders of the world and then the, the modern seven wonders of the world. Yeah. I, don't ask me to name you. I, I could probably name a few, but... Yeah. Uh, anyway, sorry. Tell me the other 11 items on your oh bucket list. That's like a, like a memory test. <laughs> I, just, I, don't, I don't remember. When did you write the book? Uh, the first one, 2016. Okay. Yeah, yeah 16. Okay, that's like a long, long time ago. Okay. I haven't read it again since. Okay, like, let me rephrase years. the question. Tell me what your bucket list is today. Hmm? Tell, Tell me, me your bu- you have a bucket list now? Now, okay, yeah. now bucket list. Yeah. Ooh. Um, well, so I, I have this dream project, actually. I haven't really talked to... I haven't really announced anything about it because it's like still exclusive, great project. right here. But again, yeah. So it's a uh, it's a story about the pepper sign, actually. Okay. Uh, I would not be proud of if I do the pepper sign and use the money for me. I wouldn't get profit for it. But what I really want to do is actually um, I will go to one of the top of volcano in Indonesia probably Rinjani because yeah. that would be like really challenging and, and really like a big journey and um, I will announce that I will go to Rinjani and you can order your pepper sign to me um, and I would let people pay as much as they want and I would 100% use the money to help others one of what one of my um, well big dream is actually building a class or a school in Sumba, Sumba oh, Island. Wow, cool. Yeah. So for children, like a, a... for children, because I went there in two thousand seventeen, and I also did the same project, but it was not uh, my my Your own. Yeah, it was like uh, I saw uh, I did like uh, we were together building a class for kids in Sumba in their school because their school is very very like the roof is uh, oh. there's a lot of holes in the roof and just very ordinary I think ordinary is not the right even the right word for it so I hope I can make that dream project come true okay maybe. well we can be your first customer oh yeah yes yeah. definitely so, when do you plan on doing that I hope next year 2024 okay. I just want to do something good for the people because I feel like I I get a lot from what who who I am now and where I am now which is like um, well okay I get the popularity I get followers um, I grew my life changed because of this but then yeah what do I bring to the world you know I feel like I haven't done enough for the world it's just like I'm much more taking than giving. I do help my family. I do have few people, but to compare with what I get, I just feel it's not fair. So I, yeah, I want to give more than what I take. Give for you. That's, yeah, that's amazing. I think that's important to, um, I guess to reach that point where you've oh, okay, I've looked after myself i've looked after my family that's like the bottom levels of the the human needs yeah now how do i start giving back but people especially photographers and and artists on social media forget the amount of people that you do help because you don't see it right you don't see the people that you inspire you know you people might watch your videos might watch your reels might see your photos and go oh i that's amazing. I want to do that. I'm going to go out and try doing that. You know, you are help. You are helping people. It's not like the, it's not like the, you know, it's not like the normal way of helping people in terms of like giving money or going yeah. to build something or volunteering yeah. or whatever it is. But you know, having the amount of audience that you do, you you're definitely helping some people in that, right? But it's, it, I think it is important for um, 
I guess, artists who get big, who get a lot of followers, get a big audience to give back in, in some way. Yeah. Because else, what's it for? You know, what's the point of it? Do you feel like there's a pressure on you to do that from other people or just from within yourself? No, within myself. Yeah. No, yeah. not other people at all. So the first project would be helping children in Sumba. Yeah. Any other people you want to help or Ooh. any other projects? Well, aside from that, um, just like dream countries, maybe like Iceland and Iceland? the US. Whereabouts in the US would you like to go? Actually, anywhere because like it will be... Uh, Don't go anywhere. Well, really? No. Because I got rejected twice, the the visa. Oh, why? I don't know, my job that time. Um, or like US visa is like the hardest to get mm -hmm. for Indonesian because they judge by, I, I don't know, actually. Because they wouldn't see your bank account. They just ask you a question and right away in front of your eyes and people queuing behind you will know that you will get a yes or a no based on the interviewer judgment mm. so yeah Interesting. maybe how you dress up maybe your job because that time i explain myself as a freelancer yeah so that could yeah be that is often better if you're sponsored by a company in yeah. the us right yeah okay well i hope you get there um i will good good luck with that yeah um what i was going to ask you was um about education do you do, do you have any interest in um you know you've been through lots of experiences you've, you've had a lot of stories you certainly know how to backpack right mm -hmm. so uh i haven't read your blogs from back then but you know i've seen a lot of your vlogs and obviously a lot of your social media uh, content do you have an interest in in that form of giving back in terms of educating others how to do what you do or any advice when you go traveling or how to be a better videographer how to be a better photographer how to write books or we haven't even talked about your clothing line but is, is education like a an interest for you as well in terms of giving back for sure yeah i think that's also like uh other than interest it's also a challenge for me because i realized that i don't give much information in social media I am much more sharing again story about me, like inspiration about how you get your dreams. Well like in a form of like technical information about like budgeting, about like how to do backpacking in the cheapest way and stuff like that. Or like a traveling route or like top five cheapest country that you could travel. I haven't done much on that area. I'm not as informative as the other blogger so that is a challenge for me and i feel like i need to get more into that because it gives big value to the people yeah yeah i think your personality as well gives value to the people like like yeah. i said before like being authentic being being who you are is there something you can share with us now about your personality that maybe other people don't know like not like a secret or anything but give us an example of Something about you that no one else knows. Oh. Well, hmm. Well, well, I need to think about that. Because, yeah, like, I... I... I told to uh, my audience that I'm introvert. Actually, quite very introvert. So, people know about that. Um, maybe, like, okay. I have anxiety of time. Time anxiety. Okay really high um i'm not a patient person i hate waiting and i just always have this thinking of like i'm running out of time i know that feeling yeah it's really giving me really hard times many times but in the other side i could use it also to motivate me to always on the move to always like i have to do something i have to grow you know what i mean so it's a matter of like how I control it. It could become an anxiety or it could become a motivate motivation. Motivator, yeah. 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 But really like thinking about time is like it's crazy. 
So you get anxious about wasting time, essentially. Like in, in terms of your life or wasting time when it, you're, speak, you're talking about like a specific job or task? No, it's, it, it's more like, uh, yeah, like life in general. Because like, I feel like now I'm like in my prime age where I'm like, I can think very clearly. My creativity is still there. But I realize that by the time I will get older, I will be like, I don't, maybe I will like, get weaker than before my body is not function as well as before my brain my creativity and yeah I, I, even like nowadays if i if i like open instagram i see this newcomer who is like young and like very creative and like they grow very fast faster than me i i will freak out like how am i old am i just like like if how my, old are you 30 29 29 three. yeah like, yeah, I feel like I'm old and like, just like, no, just, you're definitely not old. <laughs> You've got a long way to go before you get old. Don't worry about it. I think that it, I don't want to go talk about Instagram too much more, but that is one negative of Instagram, right? The the platform yeah. uh, dictates that people want to show the best side of it, right? Yeah. They want to show their best work. They want to yeah. show their best life. They want to show all the cool bits, but actually behind the scenes, they're also struggling. They're also finding things difficult. They might yeah. also be anxious. They might have, they have down days. They have good days and bad days, right? Yeah. And there's, they're just humans at the end of the day. But when we go on Instagram, we go, oh, like that's better. That, well, that, he's better than me or they're having a better life than me or he's got more money than me <laughs> or whatever. That's just normal. But if it, it it's up to us to not let it yeah. affect you. I mean, I I haven't really struggled with that before, but I do empathize with that and... I felt like that, especially in photography sometimes, going to other artists, wow, oh, fucking hell, they're, that's amazing. Uh, why can't I do that mm. right? kind of thing? But then channel it into more yeah. inspiration right. than anxiety or or like imposter syndrome yes. or any of the yes. kind of things. I think that's really key. So, oh, well, you know, now I need to be better or I now go and practice more or, or just accept the fact that... Yeah. These guys are amazing. <laughs> like, let's celebrate that. Let's yeah. celebrate that these people are in our lives. Um, it's difficult to do, but yeah. Uh, how does that anxiety like manifest in you? And and what are the symptoms? Do you have any symptoms? Do you like wake up in the night going like really anxious like that, or do you do you kind of deal with it easily on a on a daily basis? Um, uh, I would say I I deal it quite very easy. It's just like a, a few minutes of like. Uh, the first seeing of like something that okay. really makes me like, ooh, okay, I need to do something. <laughs> and then, yeah, it will um, take me quite short to actually slap myself. Like, yeah. Then I need to wake up. I need to get up. How do you stay healthy? Gym. Gym thing. Yeah. What about uh, mentally? Nowadays, it's a little hard because I travel a lot, mm. but I always try my best to like yesterday, two days ago in Singapore, I have a work to to review some brand, but I still uh, spare my time to, to go to the gym. What about mentally? Do you do anything in terms of mental health? I would say gym is like very mentally it is, yeah. evolving for me, yeah. but uh, music really helps me. Yeah. What's your favorite music? I like something very high energetic, but like in a positive way. I'm <laughs> never. <laughs> yeah, but like not a party song. More like a dreamy electronic song. Okay. Like Be Quiet or okay. Reza. Yep. So something yeah, yeah. like electronic, but like still sweet and like very inspiring and mm -hmm. like uplifting. It makes me very um, more imaginative and like it's actually one of a big way of how I manifest my life because uh, when you close your eyes listen to the music and you just can imagine things that will come yeah how, how does your imagination dictate what you do every day I mean you're always are you always thinking about oh, yeah. next project next project want to do this want to do that or do you have you know very structured life are there clients that you really want to work with or we just wait for clients to come and approach you how does your process work on a kind of you know imaginative and creativity schedule almost yeah um 
I'm a very like living it for today. So like I I would I wouldn't say I'm like a very structured person. Um because idea can come anytime. And that time when I get the idea, I'll just make sure that I write down, not in the note, but like in my mind and my heart. Okay, I feel like I need to do this. And I see in the next few weeks or few months, if I still think about it, then I really have to do it. But if I forget about it, then okay, maybe maybe it's just like a like a how do you call it? Distraction or just like it. Like um an instant imagination or like it's an instant like inspiration that instant high. <laughs> instant yeah, high. high. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not very necessary, like, you know. But like if I keep thinking about it each week, each month, then I really You know it's it. real. Yeah, really. I know it's real. Yeah. Like the book and a song. Do you know I wrote a song? No. Nope. It's in Indonesia. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I missed that Maybe one. Maybe can I don't know. It's on Spotify? Yeah. Cool. What's it called? It's called Semesta Memandu. Semesta is the name of your clothing brand, right? Yes. Semesta means the universe. Okay. Why do you call it that? Uh it's actually a love story. Okay. It's cliche, but I feel like it's cute and sweet. Um it's a love story, but I connect it with uh it's how if it's meant to be, if it's like the universe says this is for you, then it is for you. But if it's not, then good things will come. Interesting. Something like that. So yeah. Song, I know a song. It keeps in my mind like each week that time. Okay, I need to do it. And I made it happen. Books, I made it happen. Now I am currently thinking about one more business, but I will see in the next few weeks if I still keep thinking about it. Can you share any information? I'm scared because I don't know if it will happen or no. Okay. Tell us when it happens. And, uh, yeah, but yeah. I will. Yeah. Cool. I will. Um, how has travel made you a better person? Hmm. Very deep question. Um, I feel like, I feel like travel is just like one of the form that could shift a person to be a better person. Like example, what I what I'm talking about is like, if I didn't get into travel, maybe like let's say if I that time I got into a coffee shop, I'm sure it will also shift me into a better person. But it's actually how I see the world by meeting people, because I always get a lesson from each people that I met during travel that I have deep connection with. I had few people on my mind that like I had deep connection that I really learned from them. Not directly they like say anything or like teach me something, but I'm quite very observing and I always try to take lesson from things that happen. So yeah, what I... Can you give me an example? Example, okay. So this got into my core memory. So I have this, uh, one of my close friend, best friend. He, he used to live in Bali for like a year, but now he's in the Netherlands. Uh, I remember a conversation. Uh, so I, I made like a deep friendship with this person. And one day it was in pandemic. We were yeah, we were strolling around Changu. It was like very very quiet. So the business went very very down. We went to one of the local market in Changu that sells souvenirs. By the time we get into that market, I feel so sad because a lot of people, a lot of um, most of the buyers are like trying so hard to get us to buy their stuff because there's zero customers. Mm -hmm. And it was like all an old lady like approaching us, please buy, please buy. Oh, I feel so bad. And then, yeah, we cannot win everyone's, you know, game. But like we just support one of or two of the store. And then on the way back in the front of the store, there was this old lady came to us and offering, can you please buy this? Blah, 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 blah. And then one of my friends say, not now, but tomorrow I will come. Okay. 
And then the lady was like, okay, please come tomorrow in such a very hopeful way. And then and we left. And then a week after, I just realized that I remember that 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 time again, the lady again, and I asked my my friend, like, did you went back to the shop? And he said, No. And I say to him, this is actually a quote that I will remember for the rest of my life. I say to him like this, well, you gave her hope. And I think hope, hope could be the best thing, but it could also be the worst thing for anyone. And you, I think you give the worst hope because she's in need. And she got slapped. Like she, I mean, she like, uh, he, she, I'm sorry, she, he, he got like slapped from my words. And then uh, the next day we went together to the shop. Oh. And the lady remembered us. Of course. And she was so happy. I was like, ah, you come back. Thank you so much for coming back. And we bought something. And then, yeah, the lady said, good person, don't lie. Thank you so much. And yeah, that's, um, that's one thing that makes me become better and better person from these small things or small accident or like small experience that seems just an instant like thing that happened but it actually means really big that I will remember for the rest of my life that I think it taught me a big lesson of my life and these things I got from the people I travel with that I made deep connection with a oh, wonderful story give, give you and well done for pushing your friend to to, <laughs> to go back. You know, it's, you know, having people like you around is extremely beneficial. I think hope is everything. I think yeah. we, without knowing, some people are religious. I know you you're uh, religious. Um, I'm not. Other people are different religions. Other people have different belief systems or different spirituality and. Uh, somewhere in the middle of all of that, a common denominator is kind of hope. Right? We we hope that well, you know, there's there's belief, and then there's, there's hope. You know, for her, she didn't. Maybe ninety nine percent of it was belief, and then at that point, zero one percent is hope. Hope is underlines everything. Right? We yeah. hope that we wake up tomorrow healthy and happy. Yeah. We hope that a lot of people hope that they make a million dollars, and we hope this and we hope that. Um. I think it's extremely powerful, and like you said, it can it can ruin people's lives as much as make them right. Yeah. So, um, travel is just a, a an amazing conduit to to express hope, to express education, to be able to learn so much from yeah. different people. It's always about the people. Like a, a a place isn't a place without the people and the culture yeah. within it. Um, yes. So yeah, I always it's the best form of education in my opinion, uh, and not education in terms of like a book sense, not academic education, but life education, life experiences. You educate yourself about yourself. You educate yourself about other people, other ways of life, because it's very easy to just stay in your bubble. Um, that's another problem for the social media. You, there's a bubble, right? You you don't really get out there and see the rest of the world, and travel is just it's just so good for that. Mm-hmm. good for you i'm sure many people are inspired by your stories and and what you do and um a few more questions i have and then i promise i'll let you go but on the subject of inspiration you know you you, you obviously have a very active imagination but yeah who are your biggest sims everyone's got their own inspirations and people that they follow and people that they admire do you have a couple of people that you that you follow all the time or at least get inspired by or have done in the past but think about it. it's like this is I would say in every podcast that this is like will be the hard question for me because like if you ask me what's your favorite color color I would just also be confused because what's your favorite color I don't know maybe you see me in blue because uh, I don't know but like uh, I like every color I like a lot of color and when you ask what's your what's one or two people that inspires me I, I don't know because I inspired by many small things from the people Okay. So, this is a good answer. Yeah. Everything and anything. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, can I say one person that inspired me was my ex boss, Los Blanc or Christian. Oh, Leblanc. yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. Because I got the chance to work 
beside him, and I saw how he worked really, really hard, like a machine. Like I really admire that work ethic. That's how he become very successful in this platform, and he combined. A lot of things, not just travel, but like he he built houses, he built like creator academy, and I don't know what's on his mind for the next business, but I'm sure he will do a lot of things, and that really inspires me. Wow, amazing! On this podcast, we have a tradition um, where the previous podcast guest leaves a question for the next guest, not knowing who they are. Our previous guest was Alex Stroll. Um, actually, we did Finn Matson, but he doesn't, he doesn't matter. That's a that's a completely separate podcast. Um, our last Mood podcast guest okay. was Alex Stroll. He 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 wrote this question for you. Okay, not for you. He just wrote a question. For what in your life do you feel most grateful? Hmm. What are you most grateful for? Oh, that is a deep question. Once again. Uh, I've got deeper I think, questions. I think I, I'm grateful that I have my own way of seeing the world in a positive way. Um, I always believe that there is always good in everything. And that's kind of like one of my biggest life motto. And I'm very grateful in that because it keeps me be a very positive person all the time, even though, in the, well, I'm not a perfect person. I've made mistakes a lot, <laughs> but I'm like, I always try to see the good things from every mistake, every challenge, every bad thing that happened in, in my life. And yeah, I think that lesson, actually I get from my dad so I'm grateful that I have my dad. Wonderful. Because again, I remember I I, I learned from even small accident. Um, it was actually a, an accident that my dad had that happened to my dad and me in the past like 11, 12 years ago. Um, we had an accident, like a car hit, a, like road accident. My dad got bloody, but I didn't, that time I didn't see him sad or like, grumpy or anything and what he said to me is like he was laughing and was smiling i'm grateful and i was like i was going why, why are you grateful we just had an accident and he said yeah i'm grateful because it could have gone worse we could have died this is what the universe gives to us only just small scars even though he got so much blood in his end i'm grateful i still have you I'm still healthy. I still can walk. So that really taught me a lot that um, there's always a good thing in everything. Amazing. I'm grateful for my dad. Say hello to your dad. Does your, do, does your dad and, and your mom, she's still alive? Yeah. That, that's good. yeah. Do they uh, kind of understand what you do? And I mean that mm. in the best sense because their generation mm. didn't have what we have, right? Yeah. Um, so do they, they get it? They, they kind of get what yeah they social media is and yeah. how you use it for money and etc they the first first time they didn't really get it and didn't, didn't really like more like questioning about my how i chose my life they would be like huh what influencer what is this like how much profit you will get and salary and blah 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 until time by time i i prove to myself and to them that i'm growing and I help my family too. And now they're like, they never question and they're just like super happy and they're like thousand percent supporting and even promoting me in any chance they they could. They have a meeting with friends. They would be like, hey, this is my... When I wrote my book, this is what I remember from my family. Uh, we went together to uh, like a touristic place in Jakarta. That's where I lived before. Uh, my book titled Bucket List. My dad made a shirt for all of us, six of us, with the uh, writing of bucket list. <laughs> and they promote into the people in the street. And oh. this just like shows how they're really like proud and really supporting Amazing. and loving what I do. And they're still in Jakarta? Yes. Your parents. Okay. How often do you see them? 
maybe three, four times a year. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Well, thank you so much for, for thank being you here. So I know much. You're, you're extremely busy. I really appreciate your time and I'm sure the audience will appreciate um, the value you've, you've given everyone and continue to do so. So please continue inspiring everyone. Continue doing what you do best. Good luck with the projects coming up and with your charity uh, projects and giving back and making a difference. So um, good luck with that. And, and thank you so much for joining. Uh, thank you so much. Such an honor. I'm so happy that I got invited to this because, uh, again, this is something that brings value to the people. So thanks to you because you made it po this podcast. You invited a lot of inspiring people. And people are listening, people are watching, and people get inspired. And it's because of you. Thank you so very thank much. You. Well, there's nothing without you guys. So <laughs> thank you to both of us, I guess. Before you leave, um, before we, we close up, please write a question for our next guest. Okay. Take as long as you need. Okay. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, thank you once again. Hopefully, we'll have you back on the show after some of your next amazing projects. Yes, hope so too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,